Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Pretty Simple. So in today's video, we are going to be talking all about the Celestial Pearl Danio, and in specific, how to breed and care for this beautiful species in your aquarium. Sit back, relax, enjoy the video. I'm going to be playing a bunch of B-roll of this beautiful fish and talking about everything that I know with my experience in keeping these fish. So for the past eight months or so, I have been keeping the Celestial Pearl Danios in my fish room. I've got quite a bit of experience now with these guys and I haven't found them to be difficult to take care of at all. In fact, they're probably one of the easiest species in the entire fish room to keep. I haven't had any issues with these guys dying off. I did lose a few at the start and that was due to them getting stuck under some ornaments inside of my tank. So I will talk about that a bit later. But other than that, I haven't had any health issues or any other problems I've noted with difficulty of care. So they're very easy to take care of as long as you keep them in relatively stable water parameters and in clean water. Now I originally bought this species to breed in my fish room and they are quite a pricey species. In my area they go from anywhere from about $15 to $20 each. Sometimes that price can go a little bit higher depending on stock but I think that price around the world is pretty similar. So there is a reason they're a little bit higher priced and that's because the breeding isn't as simple as other species. and they do lay eggs almost daily, but each female will probably only lay about 10 to 20 eggs. But zebra danios and things like that lay hundreds of eggs at a time, which makes them a little bit more cheap. Now, it's important to note that these guys aren't actually danios. They are a micro rasbora, so that's what makes them a little bit different to the other species. Nonetheless, they're still very easy to take care of. When it comes to celestial pearl danios, I know I mentioned before that they are a little bit pricey, but you are going to want to get quite a few of these guys if you intend on keeping them. I'd recommend keeping them in as big a school as possible with a minimum of about six per school. So you can go much higher than that. You could probably keep a school of about 50. And what this will do is make the fish feel really comfortable inside your aquarium. When the fish is in lower numbers, so you have like a school of three or four, they're going to feel like they're constantly being predated on and it's going to make it very difficult for you to see your fish and also can just stress the fish out and possibly cause death. So I recommend keeping them in bigger schools of about six plus. As far as temperature, these guys do like it a little bit cooler. They can go quite hot, about 28 degrees Celsius, but I don't recommend that. I found mine do best in a temperature of about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius or 72 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit. That seems to work really well. They do like that colder water. And if you're intending on breeding them, you're going to need that cooler water. And as far as pH goes, these guys are not fussy at all. I found them to do best in a pH of about 6.6 .6 to 7.6. I keep mine at about 7.2 and they do absolutely fantastic in that. They're not too fussy on this, so just keep them in a relatively neutral pH. Now as far as foods go, this is where I think a lot of people might have trouble with caring for this species. It's no surprise that their mouths are very small as they're a nano species, and sometimes this can become a little bit of a problem for some beginner fish keepers. Because this mouth is so small, you do need some specialized foods to feed these guys. There's plenty of things available on the market like nano pellets which might work fantastic, but I don't really use those in my fish room. I think you definitely could get away with using nano pellets and crushed up flakes and they would do okay. If you're intending on breeding them, you're going to need a little bit more nutrients in your tank. I specifically feed my Celestial Pearl Danios baby brine shrimp, which I hatch out daily. I feed this about once a day and then I also feed live black worms to my breeders and this really helps to fatten them up. Obviously, if you're just trying to care for this species, you can definitely get away with some specialized pellets, so some nano pellets and you'll do absolutely fine. But if you're looking to breed them, you're definitely going to need that baby brine shrimp and it definitely helps to have those live black worms on hand. And quickly for tank mates, these guys are not fussy at all. Just keep them with other types of nano fish and they'll absolutely love it. I wouldn't recommend keeping them with bigger cichlids just for the fact they might be predated on because they are a smaller fish. So they go great in nano tanks with like shrimp and other nano species and micro rasboras. But they're a very peaceful fish. I've never seen them attack any other types of fish. They could possibly be a very good beginner fish for someone who just wants to take care of them. That's basically the care of these guys. Let's dive into the breeding of them. Now the way this fish breeds is a male will court a female over some kind of moss or some plant matter where they're going to scatter their eggs. So he'll court a female over and the pair will kind of spar together and then they'll end up coming up next to each other and releasing a bunch of eggs and a bunch of milt. Now these eggs will just fall through, they're non-adhesive and they'll go to the bottom of the substrate and what will normally happen in the wild is the current will just take these eggs downstream and they'll be done with them. Now in the aquarium, this doesn't really happen because there's not any flow or anywhere for those eggs to go. So what we'll normally see happen is if nothing's really done, we'll see a lot of spawn robbing. So what will happen is the fish will lay eggs and then they'll just go back down to where they've laid those eggs and eat them. 
It's counterintuitive, I know, but the fish aren't used to being in this environment and that's why I think they do this. But that's how the fish breeds. So what we're gonna have to do to breed this fish successfully is manipulate this. So they'll go through that breeding routine every morning, about one to two hours after the lights turn on. Each female will lay anywhere from about five to 20 eggs at a time. I've sometimes seen them lay more, but for the most part, that's normally the average. The way you tell a male and a female apart is a male is gonna have a lot more color than a female and be a lot more slender. And a female is gonna be a lot more fat and won't really have the same amount of color as a male. It's quite obvious when you see the two together, but when they're skinny in a shop, it can be a little bit hard to sex them. But this is the way you sex them. They are pretty different and they're easier to sex than some other species in this hobby. When picking out a group, I'd highly recommend grabbing about two males and eight females. I personally keep two males and six to eight females in any of my breeding tanks. And this is because we want a really large amount of females over males. What will happen is if you keep too many females in a tank, like 15 females and four males, you're just gonna have a ton of spawn robbing. I found about eight to 10 fish in a tank is really ideal because what's gonna happen is if you have too many fish in a tank, they're just gonna keep eating the eggs. So one to two males and six to eight females. Now the way I set up my spawning tanks is very simple. I use a 20 gallon aquarium. I don't add anything special to that aquarium except for a sponge filter. I keep the aquarium at about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius and the pH at that neutral 7.2. The only thing I add to the aquarium is a container with a rock and a spawning medium. Normally what I like to use for the spawning medium is a large clump of Java moss and I try and add as much Java moss to this container as possible. For this container, you're gonna want something that's kind of wide. You don't really want stuff that's tall because the fish are gonna get confused and have trouble breeding, but a nice big wide container works fantastic and it doesn't really need to be too big. What I like to do is add that spawning medium so that Java moss into that container. I add a rock on top of the Java moss and I kind of like pry it up to make it look really tempting for them. And I just sink that container down to the bottom of the aquarium and keep it in a corner. This is basically all you need to do for this aquarium. I find the sponge filter creates just enough flow for these guys to enjoy it. They don't need high flow. This is all you'll need in your breeding tank. I then feed them up on baby brine shrimp and black worms until the females are ripe. And then what you'll start to notice happening is in the mornings when you turn your lights on, you'll see the males go over to that clump of moss, attract females over and spawn in it. So every day I go through these containers, I actually have three tanks at the moment set up. Every morning I go through these containers about two and a half hours after the lights have come on and I go through and I pick out eggs. Now this is where a lot of people have trouble with breeding these guys. Raising the fry can be quite difficult because they are quite small. And the way everyone's gonna do this is gonna be a little bit more different. The way I like to hatch and raise my fry is by using these containers that you can pick up from Kmart here in Australia. I'm sure you could use any other container, but these are about four liters. All I do to these containers is add an air stone and some aged tank water with a drop of methylene blue in it. Every morning I take the eggs and I add them to one of these containers. You can see all of my containers set up on this rack. The reason I have three of them is because every three days I start adding the eggs to a new container. So the way that works is from days one to three, I'll add the eggs from all of those spawns into the first container. And then days four to six, I'll add the eggs to this next batch and so on and so forth. So each batch of eggs contains about three days worth of spawning. So the fish are all gonna be at different stages of development, but I haven't found this to be a problem. What I do is I just watch these containers carefully and wait till I start seeing some free swimming fry. When I start seeing some free swimmers, I add infusoria to this container. And there's a guide on my channel you guys can follow if you wanna learn how to culture infusoria. I'll start adding infusoria to all these containers. And as I notice the fish start to get a little bit bigger and there's more hatchlings in the container, I'll also start to go through and add some vinegar eels and some microworms in appropriate amounts to help feed these fish. I feed them only twice a day and they seem to do really well. And I think that's because there's lots of infusoria normally swimming around. And once I've noticed all the fish have hatched, I then start to feed very small amounts of baby brine shrimp. Once these guys are all on baby brine shrimp, I then like to add them to an aquarium. I'll go to another two foot aquarium and I'll just simply add all the fish to that two foot aquarium. And then twice a day, I feed quite a large amount of baby brine shrimp into that aquarium. And that's how I go about raising these guys up. It's not something that's too difficult. A lot of people should be able to follow this. It's not complicated at all. And I found it to be very easy. And from each batch, I normally get about 20 to 40 fry. And that's with three groups of breeding. So it can be quite an easy process and quite a fun process for a lot of people who want to get into egg scattering fish. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.